Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. I'm Wendy and I'm so happy you're here. If this is your first time stopping by, welcome. And I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below, as well as the little bell right next to it so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. If you like these projects, don't forget to give them a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think. Oh, am I super freakishly close to the camera right now? Let me move over. I just wanted to say how humbled and appreciative I am to have received this huge milestone. It's all because of you, and so really this belongs to you guys. Maybe I should mail it out to somebody every week. I am freakishly close. Oh dear. Anyway, thank you so much, and now, without further ado, let's get started. For this DIY, we're gonna be using three of the 24 inch Easter signs, a children's broom and dustpan set from the toy section, two of those off-brand plastic adhesive hooks, some super pretty teal and white hydrangea stems, and then also some lamb's ear from Walmart. So the first thing I'm gonna do is peel the paper off of all three of my signs, and I'll show how to do that in another project. And then I'm taking some jumbo craft sticks from Walmart and hot gluing them to the back of my sign. And then I'll attach all three together to make one big sign that's now going to be 18 by 24 inches. So now I'm going to take some Dollar Tree spackle to fill in those pesky little holes and I'll sand that down so that they're nice and flat. Then using my Waverly chalk paint in white, I'm going to paint my entire sign, including the edges. And I should have done my distressing right after I'm done painting it, but I got so excited I forgot to do that part. So now I'm just figuring out the placement of my broom and dustpan so I can see where I'm going to put my flowery corner. So I just cut apart my hydrangeas using my wire cutters and then for my base I'm going to be using that lamb's ear from Walmart and these are two dollars a bundle and they're two stems so it's a pretty generous amount. So I just cut those stems down and start gluing them along the top and left hand side of my board and then I'll add my hydrangeas to the corner and then a couple of clusters mixed in with the lamb's ear throughout my little garland. So now I'm going to place my hooks where they need to go and on the dustpan the handle was a little too thick to actually put onto the hook and I was going to feed some jute twine through that hole and hang it on the hook but it ended up just sitting right on top of there and didn't move so I just left it like that. But you could add the jute twine if you wanted to. So now I'm going to make a super perky little bow using Dollar Tree striped 5 8 inch ribbon that I love so much. And I'm using a semi fold over method so instead of rolling it over in a circle you can see here I'm folding it on top of itself and I made six loops on each side and then I'm making one super big loop at the bottom and then I'll cut that apart and I'll have built in tails. And then once I have my loops done I'm going to make tiny little slits right in the middle and take a chenille stem and wrap it around the middle and twist it in the back and those slits will allow me to move my loops around and foof up my bow so it's nice and perky and then I'll use some hot glue to attach it to the middle area of my flowers and then I'll feed those tails through the rest of my pretties and I just used a few dots of hot glue to secure those and keep them in place.
So now I'm going to be using my Silhouette Cameo 3 to cut out a stencil so I can paint it onto my board. And I'm using my Frisco Craft Transfer Tape and I'll have that linked in the description box below. And I'm using the font Simplicity from Defont.com. And you can download their fonts for free if it's for personal use. But I will have this listed in my Etsy shop. And if you want this in a decal form, that'll be available as well as the stencil. So when you're weeding out a stencil, you're going to do it the opposite way that you would a decal. So instead of taking out everything around the letters, in this case, you're going to take the letters out. And so I'm going to place some transfer tape on top of it to keep it all together. And then I'll turn it over and pull the backing sheet up. And this stencil tape was a little tacky and I was worried it would take some of the paint off of my board. So I'm just going to try and get some of that tackiness off by putting my hand on there. And then also I did add some baby powder just to make it a little less tacky. So now I'm going to place it on my board and then because it is so long I had to put some painters tape on the end of the word mommies so that I wouldn't get paint on the outside of my words. And then I'll pull that transfer tape up and then using a flat sponge dauber I'm going to take some Waverly chalk paint in ink and just tap away using super thin coats. And then once I'm done I'll pull my transfer tape up and weed out the middle parts that were left on the board. So as I mentioned before, it would be a lot easier to do your distressing before you put all the flowers on your board, but do as I say and not as I do, and it'll be a lot easier on you. But here it is all finished and I am so in love with this. I love this color so much and I don't have this in my house anywhere but as soon as I saw that dustpan and broom in that pretty teal, I knew what I wanted to make with it. Of course you could put daddy's little helper too, but this will probably be going to my daughter's house. But I love how it turned out and I hope you guys like it too. So I'd like to introduce you to another sweet friend here on YouTube. This is Yelena, aka Blondie Next Door, and today we're teaming up to bring you some fun spring farmhouse DIYs. So once you're done here, pop on over to her channel and let her know I sent you. Oh, and by the way, thank you guys so much for supporting all the creators I collab with. I see all the comments on the other channels and it just makes my heart so happy. But here's a little sneak peek of the projects she'll be sharing with you and I'm excited for you guys to meet this sweet friend. For our next Dollar Tree DIY I'm going to be using two more of those long 24 inch signs and two foam knee pads. So using my Cricut spatula I'm going to remove the galvanized metal from those little shamrocks and then I love using this method to remove the paper from my signs. So even though I use the real back of the sign for the front of my project, I don't have to paint the back of my sign, which is actually the front. <laughs> so for all of you sweet viewers that say that I've never made anything you didn't like, this could be the end of that streak. <laughs> But I'll get to that in a second. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is kind of cut down the back part of that foam so that it lays pretty flat against my board. So the problem I'm having with this is that I can't stop seeing these as knee pads. And then it gets even worse later, but I'll get into that in a second. So I'm just going to paint my boards and my knee pads, even though these are not going to be knee pads. They are not knee pads. Just keep thinking that. <laughs> And then once I get my boards painted, I'm going to go in with my black ink, 
chalk paint and then distress all the sides and on top of my boards and I'm also going to distress the actual knee pads. <laughs> So before I attach my knee pads to my boards, I'm going to put my holders on the back so that I can lay it flat and I just take a chenille stem and twist it and then just put some hot glue down and then a little piece of ribbon right over the top of that. So now to attach my foam holders, <laughs> I'm going to take that elastic piece and feed it through those slits on the sides of it and then I'm going to take the velcro and attach it together. and. Just pull it pretty tightly so that it's nice and secure. But then to close up the bottom portion, I'm gonna use some hot glue and just glue down that bottom portion. So now you could use this onion grass as the filler for this, but I found these lavender pieces from Walmart and they were $3.47 for this big, huge bundle and they're 23 inches long. So since our board is so long, I'm gonna use those instead. So now I'm going to take some Dollar Tree Spanish moss and tuck that into our sconces. <laughs> and then I'm going to take some more of that striped ribbon from the Dollar Tree and hot glue that over that elastic portion and wrap it all the way around and hot glue it on the other side. So now I'm going to make a sweet little bow and I'm going to use the burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to fold it over in thirds and then tie it in the middle with a chenille stem and I make sure to cut two the same size so that my bows will be the same size for two sconces. So then after I get that put together with a chenille stem, I'll dovetail the ends and then I'm going to take some jute twine and wrap it around about five times on each side and then tie that off in the middle with another piece of jute twine and I'll tie that to the burlap ribbon and then attach that around my stems just above my sconces. Now I just kind of flew through that because once I put this on there, the good news was it no longer looked like a knee pad to me anymore. The bad news is that with those strings and the side stripes, it totally looks like a big pair of tennis shoes. <laughs> Wait till you guys see it. Oh my goodness. It was so dumb. <laughs> and this is what I saw. <laughs> I sent my daughter this picture to ask her if I should add the beads or not. Anyway, as soon as I took that picture, I was like, oh my goodness, this has to change. So I took some of those puffy dots and tried to salvage this project because I think it was going to be cute in my brain. And then anyway, so I just added the dots with some hot glue across those little lines. And then I'm going to paint everything white including those stripes and they still kind of show through a little bit but it was a lot better than <laughs> I might as well have put a Nike swoosh on the side <laughs> anyway I still do love how it came out and then once I got it all painted white I'm going to go back in and give that some dry brush with my ink chalk paint over the dots and over the sides And here they are, finally finished, and I think I pulled it out okay. I forgot to mention the best part is that when you paint the foam, the chalk paint cracks and gives it that kind of crackled effect, which I thought would make it look like concrete or weathered stone. And I also thought the shape resembled a water font, and I did think about lowering the knee pads to cover up the bottom corners of the sign, but then it looked way too long and disproportionate, and these guys already had enough problems. <laughs> but anyway, I do like how they turned out, and I do have them on my front doors for my neighbors to enjoy, <laughs> since they probably won't see this video or know how they were made.
So a few years back, I had done this DIY where I just covered a couple of boxes using a Dollar Tree pillowcase and used that for my pantry organization. And so I was cleaning this out and changing it up and I saw these sitting on my white chairs and I thought they looked so pretty. So I decided to turn them into pillows. So all I did was cut off the sides of my pillowcases and I'm gonna measure down to see what size I need to make them. And then I'm gonna use the hem that's already on there from the pillowcase itself. And I'm gonna fold it over in thirds and get it to the size that I need it to be. And then for the other end that I'm gonna tuck inside, you won't see it, but I'm gonna make it a clean edge anyway. And I found this teeny tiny little iron at Walmart and I think it was $9.99. And I saw Yami at the Latina next door use one of these and I just thought it was so cute but it is so handy and you don't have to break out your big iron. So I'm just going to fold that over to give that a clean edge and then using my sewing machine I'm going to hem that down using just a straight stitch. And then once I fold it over and I'm doing all of this inside out. So my fabric is the good side facing up and then I fold the good hem down first and the one that I just stitched, I'll fold over on top of that. And then I'll pin it down and sew both sides of that. And I make sure to give it the double stitching going back and forth when I get to the ends so that it doesn't come apart. And then I'll turn it inside out. And this way it's a pocket slip cover so that I can pull these out and wash them. And then I'm just gonna put my pillow cushion in there that I get from Walmart, these 16 by 16 inch pillow inserts. And that's all there is to it. And I think these are so pretty and I love the white and gray against the white of my chairs. But I love how these turned out, super cinchy, a dollar each, plus I think the inserts are $3 and some change at Walmart. But anyway, I still love them and I hope you guys like them too. For our next Dollar Tree DIY, we're just going to be using six of these rugs. And that's it! And my sewing machine. So all I'm going to do is cut these down. The width of these rugs is pretty much 13 inches, so that was as large as I could really do it without piecing them together. So I'm just going to make 13 inch squares, and I'm going to make a total of six of them. And I'm going to be making a poof <laughs> for the ground. You know what a poof is. And so I just cut off the thick edges, the hems that are already on these rugs. And so I'm working with six flat pieces. So what I'm gonna do is take two of my squares and place them on top of each other. And then I'll do a line of stitching down one of those sides. You can't really tell the difference between the front of the fabric and the back, but you can tell the direction of the zigzags. So I am gonna keep those all going horizontally and then once I get those two attached, I'm going to add my next one and then my next one. So I'll have four all together making one big long panel. And then I'm going to take the first edge and attach it to the last edge and then run another stitch down that so you have one big circle or in this case a square. Then I'm gonna take my next square and put it on top of my big square and stitch around there. And once I get to a corner, I'm gonna lift my foot of my sewing machine and pivot it with the needle still into the material so that I can make that clean corner. And then I'll go about my business and do that on all four sides. Now that'll be the bottom, or it doesn't matter, that'll be the top actually, but you do one with all four sides sewn down and then on the other side we do the same thing but we're going to leave a little opening so that we can stuff our poof. And 
And so I have to tell you guys, I was pretty proud of myself in a non-boastful way that I got my corners to line up with the side seams because that never happens for me, but it totally worked out perfectly in this case. So once I got everything all stitched together, I'm gonna pull my poof right side out and then I'm gonna stuff it with something I have plenty of. And that would be Dollar Tree bags. <laughs> so I always forget to take my nylon ones in or my reusable ones. So I thought this would be environmentally responsible and make up for all those bags that I use. I also wanted this to be nice and sturdy so the bags really gave it a lot of heft. Is heft a word? Anyway, now I'm gonna take an upholstery needle and just some black thread and I'm just poking that in there. I don't know how to do a disappearing stitch, but this is gonna be the bottom anyway. So maybe one day I'll learn how to do that. So I think I did a pretty good job on that. You can't see it very much, but I think it's because of the fabric and it's got a lot of texture so it doesn't show. So anyway, then I just flipped it over and I'm gonna take some of that tasseled fringe that was on our rugs and I'm gonna fray it a little bit on the top and then just stitch that about two and a half inches down from the top and it's done. And here it is all finished and oh my goodness, I love this so much. Now this project came out even cuter than what I had in my brain. And it's so pretty against the white of my couches and my rug. And it's totally functional because it's got some heft, which I looked that up and that is a word. Not that that would have mattered because I like to make up my own words, but it can hold a little weight like a book or the remote control or even feet if you want to use it as a footstool but it does make a crunchy noise. So you may want to stuff it with something a little bit quieter. And also that wheel in the background is from my tea cart that's in my living room that we use as a side table. But I love how this turned out and I hope you like it too. For this Dollar Tree DIY, we're using six of those heavy duty wood signs and four of those wall mount wire racks and some black faux leather ribbon. So the first thing I did was got all of my stickers off of the back of my signs and then I took these outside and started sanding them down, but I found they weren't being sanded very well. And then I realized, oh, maybe I should put some sandpaper on my rotary sander. <laughs> so that worked a lot better. So I'm just gonna sand these down and then you could just leave it like this and do a Megan at Glue Guns and Roses tray, but we're gonna be making a coffee mug rack. So Michael J picked these up at the Home Depot and we're using two of these two inch mending braces and we're basically making a big frame. So that's what we'll use to attach our two vertical pieces together. And then for the top and bottom of our frame, we'll use four of these two and a half inch corner braces. So I'm just gonna use my cordless drill and actually I think this is a, an impact gun. But anyway, we're screwing in the screws that come with the braces and then we made sure that they were perfectly straight by laying a straight edge against it so it won't be wonky. And then for the top and bottom parts, we'll attach those to the ends of our horizontal pieces so that our wire racks will reach the sides and can be attached. Because if you attach it on the inside, it'll be too long and our racks won't reach the end and so they won't be able to be attached. So now because these corner braces have four holes in them, it was only gonna have one screw on one side and then three screws on the other side. So we just tilted it a little bit so that there would be two and two, if that makes sense. 
So now I'm going to measure down six inches and place our first rack and then I'm going to measure another nine inches which will bring us to 15 inches and place another rack and then 24 inches and then 33 inches. And then to attach them we're going to use these rounded staple type nails. I don't even know what these are called but they work perfectly although it did cause an earthquake when we were hammering them in. So now we're going to measure in four inches from each side and then we'll place a D ring at the top so we can hang our rack and these are two dollars and thirty cents for a two pack and then I'm gonna take it all outside and we're gonna spray paint it using my Krylon fusion spray paint in matte black and that's not flat black because it looks a little bit different but that's from Lowe's and it's $4.98 a can and I only used about a half of that can because it covers so well So then to cover up the holes on the wire racks where it would normally be hung, I'm using that faux leather ribbon from the Dollar Tree and feeding it through the front onto the back and then I'll flip the whole thing over and hot glue it to the metal bracket thingy. And here it is all finished and I am so in love with how this turned out. I just added some pretty mugs and a couple of buckets with greenery and my beautiful Ray Dunn Be The Light mug that a sweet viewer Kim Harper sent me from Southfield, Michigan. I love that mug so much. And I know this was a little bit involved and there were extra hardware pieces that I used. But I have seen Bargain Bethany and Simple Made Pretty do different versions that looked so amazing, but maybe a little easier. So I will have both of their videos linked in the description box below, as well as Megan's tray video on Glue Guns and Roses that I mentioned. And then of course I'll have Yelena's video right at the top so you can see what she made. I have to apologize at how far behind I am on the comments and getting back to you guys. I used to put a heart on there as soon as I replied so that it would keep my place, but I'm gonna start putting the hearts on as soon as I read them so that you do know that I have read it. And then if I get a chance, I'll go back and reply to some of you guys. It's just, there's a lot and that's such a blessing, a great problem to have. So please keep them coming. I hope you enjoyed these projects and if you did, don't forget forget to give them a thumbs up and if you're not already I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below and make sure you hit the little bell too so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Oh and I'm behind on those messages too you guys so <laughs> I will get back to you. I love you all. I hope you have a blessed day and remember to always be the light. Bye!